good as the voice. Yeah. This is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran. Uh, I love Hallmark uh, Australia movies. Hey, it's Panda, and I like Hallmark Australian movies. Good day, mate. Good day, mates. <laughs> I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark acquired Australian. If you think it couldn't get worse, movies. And this is the, the Deck, Deck of the Hallmark, Hallmark podcast. podcast. Yeah, Panda on the Deck of the Hallmark podcast. We can take it to the tape later. Went that full no voice modulation one sil- like one note. You were like deck the Hallmark deck podcast. the Hallmark podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. were you doing there? Uh, were you late? No, bringing my A game. You were late, and you were like, I don't have time to. I don't have my time voice. to modulate anyway. Deck, deck the Hallmark podcast. I think voice modulation is one of the dumbest things we've come up with. As Even though you did it just this for the last. I hate it though. It's one. <laughs> it's habit, but I don't like it. What do you mean? It's one of the dumbest. You think voice modulation is one of the dumbest things we've come up I with? Think as if we could just, I want to be clear. It, it has ruined so much As a communication. species, like voice modulation has been around probably since before like the written word. Mm-hmm. And you think that's dumb. What's, dumb. what's worse, voice modulation or nuclear bombs? Man, stop it. We, this okay, is a nuclear, nuclear, nuclear bombs aren't okay. great. Okay. Uh, voice modulation though? Where, right. Uh, with number two. other... Th- <laughs> With Nuclear number two, bombs. yeah, yeah, voice modulation. Man, we are in here cozy today, guys. Yeah, cozy. we are. Yeah, rent, rent went up, so we said, "Give us a little space, a little, little space." <laughs> Rick's throwing fire into the 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 wood burner over there. Keep us warm. Yeah, the wood yeah. burner. The wood, we have a wood Not burner. Not a wood stove. It's just a wood, wood burner. The old wood burner. It just burns wood. Just a yep. fire pit. Yeah, that's the worst. Okay, cut Got it back. It. Ooh, what if for tomorrow's episode we just sat in the chairs over there? Brought them over. We all ha- handheld boys. We and just keep trying different things. We just different sit s- with no logos or TV No, or no, anything. we br- bring the seats over. That'd be way easier than bringing all the cameras over. No, I agree with you, but the seats are so low to the ground. It'd be fun. It would be like you'd see like our neckline. And I think that's it'd be okay. it. Well, but you could drop cameras low, right? I don't know, man. I, These bar stools are just delectable. They're great. I would love, uh, let's just do one episode literally over there. Yeah, about the the water coolers? Yeah, like water the, cooler just talk. Just so we could just say a we Bramble did it. Jam Plus Extra or just a real boy? A real boy. Wow. <laughs> Talking about One Calls the Heart, season yeah, two, episode that's what that's five. worth. No, no, no. That's the Wind Calls the Heart set. I'm in. I'm in. So there's put a little sheet of notebook paper up, Wind Calls the Heart, season two. <laughs> we hang it on the- Spell it wrong. We put it over there on the uh, on the water cooler itself to cover up the Crystal logo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're not the, sponsored yeah, by Crystal. The logo of the water company that we have here right. not yeah crystal whatever it's crystal the water does look crystal clear but it does it's not, it's i want to be clear. yes of course yeah, yeah, yeah. um mm. guys uh i have dasani i don't know <laughs> i don't know why rig said dasani just now guys i gotta give you an update i teased it for you earlier but i did see thunder force i know you guys were wondering or, is brain gonna see it now I, <laughs> this is what i want so this stupid. is all that i'm gonna say about thunder force uh-huh yeah. um Th- there is a character played uh, by what's his name uh, Bateman West Brown and um, Zig Ziglar. No, uh, Ziglar. Uh, 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 Bateman. Carrie what's Wolf. his first name? Ba- Jason, Jason Bateman. Bateman. Jason Bateman's in Baker it, Bayfield, and he plays a character who has uh, crab l- crab legs for arms. That's his character. That's his superpower, or he was just born that way. <laughs> Um, no, he was not born that way. It, um, it happened in a, 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 a serious, uh, a, there was a, <laughs> he's trying not to give spoilers away. Yeah. So yeah, spoilers for Thunder Force. I am under the impression that Thunder Force was created because whoever <laughs> wrote that movie had an idea. What if Jason Bateman had crab legs for arms? That's, I think what they had first and then, and then everything else came afterwards. It. That's the only thing I can figure. Was it that bad? Uh, it's fine. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. There it is. But Jason Bateman's character having crab legs makes no sense. And it was it it, it didn't need to happen. <laughs> There's literally a scene of him and uh, what's her name? Tammy? Melissa McCarthy. Melissa, yeah. It, <laughs> in a very... <laughs> Tammy, it's a secret, Tammy, Tammy, Tammy and Jason Bateman... <laughs> Are, are are dancing and she's like putting butter on his arms. It's weird. It's weird. I'm telling you, man. The whole movie that was that was the idea. The general idea it was crab legs. Was jokes. crab legs, and then everything else. Crab legs. Let's jokes. see what we can come up with. Thunder Force, man. 
Say what I, you will. I'm interested now. Like, I will say your pitch of that made That me. bit makes me want to watch the movie. Jason Bateman is great. He, 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 there's also a funny bit that keeps coming back when he, the, the evil characters are called miscreants, uh-huh. but he's only half miscreant, so he calls himself a half creant, and people keep hearing him say half Korean. And oh. it's just, a, it's just, it is what it is. It's Jason Bateman with, like, with, with crab legs, and that's it. That's it. That's the movie. Gee. Tammy two. Tammy, Tammy two. two. Crab leg edition. Oh, so man. how was your weekend? Oh man, so good. I didn't watch Thunder Force, so you know. What did you watch? What are you guys watching? Sign up for the big three. Uh, sign up for uh, <laughs> Brimble Gym Plus. We'll do a big we'll three. Get, we'll do the big three. That's right. Um, Thunder Force wanna, is not going to be I one of my give three. That out for free. No, right? Lord, you know, no. Don't ask me what I'm watching. I'd be like giving out Yo Gabble Gabble for, for free. free. Like Who what is this? Twenty twenty. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. <laughs> You guys ready to talk about um, Man. Hearts Down Under? Hearts Down Under. That wasn't bad, Brian. <laughs> Hearts you. Down Under. That was pretty Let good. Let me try. Hearts Down Under. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, what did you I think I said House Down Under. <laughs> I think I got you just said. Uh, Dunder. Hearts Dunder. Hearts Down Under. Hearts Down Under. Hearts D apostrophe under. I stand by what I said. Now, this movie oh. originally premiered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Strip that <laughs> layer off. Woo! Come on, wait, wait. You say hot thunder mm. and it gets it's spicy in here. Show that arm. Oh, oh look at those guns. Look at that. That did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I flexed and nothing it's happened. It's eerily similar to when the lead in the movie takes off his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> in yesterday's episode of Deck the Hallmark, I... Uh, Gave Great. an impassioned plea for Hallmark for more shirtless fellas. Because there's a shirtless scene in the princess switch that Bran went gaga over. And and he's oh. like, why isn't this happening more? And then we get this movie today where it's like, I mean, Panda and I are 20 pounds from that guy. <laughs> like, it's like, what? <laughs> there's, he hasn't even been to the gym. Like, what's happening right now? <laughs> Hearts Down Under originally aired and on uh, Netflix Australia like a year ago. It was ago. uncanny. It was you just like... I thought that was like, it's like looking in the mirror if I went on a uh, keto diet for a week. There's no definition there at all. None. Zero. Could you guys do the rest of the show with your shirts off? I think it would make everybody... No, he never out. has to sit down with his shirt on, and that wouldn't that's be fair. That's not fair. No, that's, that's not, not fair. a fair assessment. That's not right. fair. Because if you do... It just, yeah, it just, yeah. it just kind of... Yeah. Just, it, it poofs. But it guys, poofs. we're not we're not on no, F R N D L Y anymore. I, we can do what we want. D L Y, you know, it's F R N D L Y E I N G O. So uh, I, I will I will say this. Uh, it it is the, one of the few occasions. Like every time, I mean, Hallmark movie stars aren't actual movie stars. I know. Don't nobody get upset, but. Every time one of them appears shirtless, like Christopher Russell appears shirtless, you're oh, like, "Oh boy, yeah." Even if I worked out my whole life, like there's just yeah. a genetic giftedness yes. there that I I don't possess. But this guy comes out of the beach with his with his shirt off, and you're like, "I could get I could get there, like I could get to." to it that. doesn't still confident. Now I want to be abundantly clear. <laughs> I'm not. I'm no, not there. No, uh, and nor that, will I ever and be. And that dude is miles more attractive than, than any I'll of us. Ever be. Yes, yes. And, and yes. will ever be. I'm not it, saying he's a good looking fellow. But he walks out from the ocean, and you're like uh, underwhelmed. Uh, yeah, I would say under, at the very under, least underwhelmed. It's just like all right. I and like, here's the thing: like I you see it, him I, with you see him with some of his shirts on, and you're like, boy, he's he's, he's gonna chiseled, have it. Yeah, right? he's, he I doesn't think have. I could it. challenge him to a push up contest. No, I think I could challenge him to a push up contest. I think I could. What's his name? Google Ross, him. Tim Ross, I believe. Google him. Tim a, Ross. DM Tim Ross and ask him if he will do a push-up contest. No, we'd have to be in the same room. Against you. Because there's live, live stream. No, no, We'll do live. It was no, for charity. No, 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 no. It's for charity. It. it would have to be same room. Tim. I, I would do it. I would do it. Stream. <laughs> he would beat me, I think. Yeah. Uh, just a hot take. So the only reason you're not doing <laughs> it. I have, I have seen you do a push-up. And I, I, I love you. It's. It was not. But I would probably wager that Tim Ross would be you. I, it's because I get shaky on the up. Yeah. Wait, the only and reason on the you're down. not when doing it is because of intimidation? Shaky. I would intimidate him. That's the whole thing, is if we were together, I feel like I could intimidate That's him. That's what you think it yeah. is, huh? Yeah. Now, live stream, he probably takes me. He probably beats me. You think that being in person, the intimidation yeah, I factor. I would intimidate Tim Ross. Give, what, how, what's a, it's a plus how many for you with the intimidation It's a factor? plus 30. 
Wow. Well, that's why I have it out. There's a 30 yeah. push up. That's why I, I'm always yeah. shaking my, yeah. my push ups. Because I'm watching you. so closely. Cushion, it yeah. makes me uneasy. I can only do By ten. myself, I rip off a thousand. Yeah, I know. I can only do 10. <laughs> I can only do 10 if we live streamed it. But if I got Tim Ross here, I can do 40. He stops at 22. <laughs> I just keep going to like bury him. Just like, yeah, hey, Tim, let's go. I, I feel Tim like Ross, if you're listening, I know you could beat me in a push up contest. That would be very, very clear. I feel like there has this. to be some sort of like, you know, like to get into like the military, you have to pass some tests. Yeah. I feel like to be a lead in an uh, a lead actor in a movie, yeah. you have to at least be able to do 100 push ups, right? A hundo without stopping? Yeah, you have to. That's, Dude, that's a lot of push ups. That guy can do 100 push ups without stopping? <laughs> That we I just would, watched? I'd like to hope so. No. I don't know. Maybe. I just, I want, I want, when I think about these rom-com guys, I want them to be able to hold me for a while, you know? Like, like and I pick think, you up like yeah, that. just pick me you up, want them to rock, dude, rock I, me, comfort me, whatever I, I need. I held you, you for a photo shoot. That's a true sentence. <laughs> yeah. And the reason I know I held you is because Panda was supposed to hold you with me and he did nothing. He had my to shoe. To be fair, all I could do was get your shoe. You're a big boy. <laughs> you are arm span. There wasn't a lot left of brand to hold. Wingspan. <laughs> Arm span? <laughs> Arm span. Some Arms life. in your span. <laughs> I don't know how I can make this clear for you, Daniel. <laughs> Man, we we really have done it today. We're right. 11 minutes it's in. It's hearts down <laughs> under. It's like seven minutes of push-off shirtless Tim Ross talk <laughs> and not in a positive manner. <laughs> But he does look like it great wasn't. value, Ben Affleck, yeah. and, and it's fantastic. Yeah. He's a good looking yeah, dude. Good looking dude. And awesome. Give that me accent. yours so I can sit back while I do yeah, this. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, April 24th, 2021 is when this originally aired in the States. It did an air on Netflix in Australia last year. 2020. <laughs> exactly right. I don't want a little something like this. Uh, Caroline. Time change. Is it still 2020, though? Boy, good question. And I think that's another excellent reason why we should all just commit to one time. One time, that's right. Caroline. Caroline is a hotshot New York City chef who is just working nonstop. She gets something in the mail. It's from Australia. What could this be? She inherited a cafe. Uh, guys, get a quick, quick question. Uh, when you get something in the mail, where on the list of things it could be is is, is inheriting a, a cafe? Ooh, man. Uh, five. Five? What are the four ahead of it? Uh, canary. Uh, jewelry box. Uh, uh, bowling pins. These are things you would have inherited instead or things that would come in the mail? She gets there and uh, bumps into a guy named Simon, who is uh, over the, the, the uh, not cabin. Uh, the cafe. Ca no, yes, but also owns the cottage. The cottage. That's the sea. Uh, the cottage. That's the what? <laughs> That's the sea. Get rid of it. Um, so uh, he owns the cottage, remodeled the whole thing. It looks wonderful. Um, but listen, she's a hotshot chef from New York, doesn't have time for Simon. She goes to the cafe. She orders a bunch of food to try it all. Simon comes out, says, what do you think? And she's like, oh, it's just all okay. It's not anything to write home about. And uh, then she discovers that Simon is the, the, the chef there at the cafe. So that's unfortunate for her. Uh, she decides that she's going to sell the seagull. That's the name of the cafe and they found a potential buyer who is going to renovate and they don't know what's going to happen past that will the crew still have jobs i don't know will it get demolished one day i don't know the crew's devastated they want to show caroline how much the seagull means not just to them but to the town Caroline is trying to find a contractor to fix up the seagull, but apparently all of the contractors in Australia are retired or busy. Uh, so Simon, who renovated a cottage himself, says, I can do it, but I don't want you to sell it. And she says, I can't promise you that, but I will fill in a chef while you do all the work. And somehow that's a fair trade. Caroline and Simon spend a good bit of time together and they uh, really like each other, aside from the fact that Caroline is trying to sell the seagull. One night, he takes her on uh, his boat. She really opens up about how much uh, she's like lost her joy of cooking and whatnot. And they end up almost kissing. She pulls back. She says, probably not a good idea. And you're probably right, Caroline. Trust that intuition, girl. Uh, the next day, they get in an argument and, and he says, uh, you shouldn't sell and, and just run it yourself. Or run it and I, we can do your thing. We'll run it, you know. And she's like, it's not that easy. And he's like, it can be that easy. Now, at that point, they might also be talking about themselves as a couple. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, beautiful, yeah. really, the way that life 
is that way. Um, so, but then they, you know, they make up and they dance at a party and they get really close to kissing. But then her ex-boyfriend, who I genuinely did not know was going to be back in this movie. No way. Didn't see, didn't it, coming. see it coming. And that's why I didn't mention him early on in the, in the synopsis. Um, and he's like, hey, I love you. And she's like, get out of here. Um, but it really bummed Simon out that he was there in the first place. That night, Caroline's looking at his, her aunt's uh, recipe book and finds that she kept all the newspaper clippings uh, about her and her successful business and whatnot. And she's like, I just can't do this to her. I can't sell this place. So she changes her mind. She's going, uh, she's not going to sell. She's going to leave it over to the crew to, to do it. But then the next day, she walks in and the whole crew's talking about how they did everything they could to not make her sell, including Simon putting the moves on. And Simon's like, listen, there's nothing we can do anymore. She hears that and she's like, Simon was just putting the moves on me so that I wouldn't sell? I'm totally selling. Um, and Simon's mom then traps them in the pantry together. Um, and she's like, I'm not unlocking this so you decide not to sell. They get in an argument which leads to some sort of food fight um, and he's like I'm not pretending that I like you I like you okay they end up getting out of the pantry she gives it some more thought and she once again decides I'm not going to sell she heads back to New York she cooks for a, a big food critic and that's when Simon shows up and is like I don't want to run the seagull without you and they kiss and then the picture frame comes to life with moving video from the past it's amazing and now my Friends was hot oh, down, down under. under. Um, oh, good day, good day. We did it, dude. No kangaroos, no kangaroos in this movie. No Shocking. outback steakhouse in this movie. Which no blooming onion. I can't believe that. I, Basically, I'm not here for Australian the at onion. all. Not Australian at all. Not even a little bit. What you guys really like the blooming onion? Yeah. Oh yeah, the sauce. Oh my god, get out of here. I've never been a big uh, onion boy, so I. Yeah. I never... You could baste me in that sauce, and I'd be okay. Oh, I'd do it. <laughs> Boys, I, I just don't know. We'll take a break. We'll be back here on Deck the Hallmark. <laughs> this episode goes out to everybody who <laughs> says that we uh, take a break within the first 10 minutes. That's right. Because <laughs> we're almost 20 minutes in. Yeah. You got shirtless Tim Ross talking. Take that, instead. Josephine. <laughs> That's right. Josephine. All right, boys. You ready to talk about Hearts Down yeah. Under? Born Wish ready. Oh, man, you got a tear. That's so funny. Bit, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it just brings me to tears, this show. Oh, yeah. it's so funny. And stuff. that blooming onion sauce. Oh. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's so good. Can you imagine if, uh, I don't know, Panda <laughs> was somehow basted in it? The only way it could get better is if somebody <laughs> helped me. No, I, I'm just here to help, man. That's why... So I, I want you to fulfill your dreams. What do you want from me? I'm just a given dude. That's just your good friend. Your good yeah. friend. Uh, let's talk about this movie. Let's do the hot takes. This is where we share exactly how you felt about this movie. We don't hold back. And Panda, I'm entrusting you with this. Yeah. Don't hold back, pal. Don't Whoa. hold back. What did you think about Hots Down Under? Uh, yeah, you know, not not as bad as I expected for an acquired movie. Uh, it, it was fine. Uh I really liked the the little cafe uh, that had a really good vibe to it. it. It felt I picked up on in this movie a sense of the small townness going on. Like it's all takes place in basically a little square yeah. of the city. Uh, I, I, I like that. Um, I think you know I, the movies that Cindy Busby's in are not normally my favorite ones. I'm not necessarily a real big fan of some of the movies she's in. That, that said, I, I didn't mind her in this one. Normally when, I, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan, but this one, I thought she did really well in this. I thought um, her character uh, was charming and had some some growth there. Uh, I liked um, for the, the cast of uh, staff members in the cafe overall. I thought they added overall to the, the vibe of the movie. I wish we actually would have gotten a little bit more time with them. I think that would have been good. There's some stupid, stupid things in this mm -hmm, movie, like yeah. next level dumb, uh, which we'll talk about. But, you know, overall, not a hate. Uh, not, I, I, it was fine. Yeah, that, that's uh, as hot as I can get. I fully anticipated to uh, go into this movie and end it by saying, I thought, I thought this movie was turds down under. But I didn't think that mm -mm. at all. You had that <laughs> locked and loaded? Yeah. That was the one. You were I like, walked into the office this morning. I saw it. I was like, I'll use it on the podcast one way or the other. Uh, the boys will like this one. Um, 
and you know what? I didn't think it was turds down under. I thought it was a lot of fun down under. Um, I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. No. Good. Um, yeah. I mean, I like Cindy. Uh, I liked uh, uh, Ben Affleck. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I like the, the the crew of uh, Zany Zany Zany's oh, seagulls. Zany yeah, Zots. I, uh, I I don't know. I the thought it was seagulls. I thought that it, this movie, it, to sum it up in a word, was fine. Yep. I thought this movie was <laughs> fine. Yep. And you know what? Sometimes that's all that you want. Yeah. Sometimes you just want fine. And you know what? I'm happy I, that it happened. Can I be clear on one Let's thing? Be because clear. I know somebody, clear. I know somebody's going to say, how is it that you liked this movie more than the Irish movie? That is incorrect. I like the Irish movie that we saw a few weeks ago way, way this more. This or Chasing Waterfalls? Uh, I like this better than Chasing Waterfalls. This or Chasing Waterfalls? Because uh, we got two Busby joints in like less than two months. Man, that's tough. I think I would do this one yeah. over Tracing Waterfalls, I believe. Yes, I would too. Yeah. I don't think it's fair uh, when when uh, people compare our hot takes from movie to movie. I, I don't think you can. Because, because it's, uh, we're, we are in the, we are, we are full, bo this is a, this is its own thing. And so we're it's just. It's an acquired movie. Like guys, yeah. like these movies have a, a ceiling. So like the Irish movie is, is for Hallmark wasn't necessarily it's my a, favorite, but it was a good, like it was. It's a different degree this. of difficulty when you yes. have a, a acquired Australian movie that aired in, on Netflix six months ago. Yes. Having said that, yeah. this was Turds Down Under. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Yes. Turds, turds Down Under. I came up with that myself. Did you? You it walked was, into the yeah, office turds, this morning? Turds Down Under. With your, I, in your I back, it, in you your back in pocket? I'll show you. Yeah, yeah, back pocket. Turds Down Under. This movie is terrible, guys. It's bad, but bad, bad, bad. Uh, <laughs> and what the sad part is, and I mean this in all sincerity, this is not a sarcastic comment. I think this is Cindy Busby's best performance. She, there's a scene, I'll get to it in my All the Feels, where she does some really good emoting and does stuff that they usually don't let you do in Hallmark movies. The movie around her is atrocious. All of the movie, th there are two major reasons that I, this movie's terrible. Number one, it consists of just scene after scene of Cindy Busby is too weak to do something herself. All movie long. Like, I can't knead the dough. I've been a chef for 20 years. Can't knead dough. Need a man's help. I can't fish. I can't pull a hat up by myself. I need dude to help me. I can't clam. I've been clamming before. No, no, no. Dude's got to help me. It's all movie long. Like every scene is her going, I thought I could do this. It turns out I can't without a man's help. Real bad. And then but have you seen all, that man with a shirt on? Oh, man, with his shirt on. He <laughs> Give him some Dunkin' Donuts and a cigarette, and he is Ben Affleck. Oh, God. Uh, and then the second reason is, is I'm this movie dares us not to visit Australia. <laughs> like it is a movie set in Australia that basically is like, try to find something that's iconic from Australia in this movie. Try, try to find it aside from the accent. There is nothing in this, this movie. This movie very well could have been filmed it could in have Maine. Filmed anywhere. <laughs> On the we, coast of Maine. Literally, we saw the Ireland movie. It was like, man, I want to go to Ireland. I saw this movie and I was like, I want to go to Soundstage East. Like, I don't, <laughs> there is, it dares us to say this wasn't shot. And I know it was shot in Australia. Yeah. Because we've read that it was shot in Australia right. and they traveled over there, but nothing. Cindy from, told us herself. That there's nothing in Australia that stands out in this movie that makes you want to go there or to establish it as Australia. They didn't even show you that big weird thing. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, 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 with the loopy thing. thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog the, if they gelled it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. It's the, Isn't that the uh, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney Opera, Opera Sydney, House? Sydney, yeah. Sydney yeah. Sonic. Yeah. Sydney Sonic. Yeah. Sydney Sonic, Sonic Sydney Opera House. Yeah. yeah. Jim Carrey's there. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Wow. But they didn't show us any of it. It was like, what, what are we even doing right now? I don't understand. Yeah. So yeah, it's it was an interest. It is. It was a very interesting it, uh, location movie. If uh, the movie's <laughs> going to be bad, at least give me some locale stuff. It did not give the me water any was locale pretty. stuff. Yeah, but that's. I mean, I'm not even gonna, you you and I both know that, that water could have been anywhere. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I true. just was well, bad. We saw. We saw. We, saw, is, we watched uh, a moonrise. <laughs> yeah, this is. You don't get moonrises. You don't get like moonrises that. everywhere. No, you don't. This is. Probably the worst of the year. It's up there. Beverly Hills Wedding. Oh, Beverly Hills. Um, like it's light years worse than this. this. We're like Beverly Hills Turd. <laughs> Tur Turtley Hills Wedding. Turtley Hills. <laughs> Beverly Turd's Wedding. That's yeah. Oh, one. I yeah. like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> Is it Beverly's Turd, though? <laughs> no, Beverly Turd. Beverly Turd. That's her name. <laughs> Hi, Beverly Turd. Nice to meet you.
<laughs> Get married. Keep my last name. Uh, I'm an independent woman. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to our turd talk. Um, <laughs> it's time for all the feels as part of the show. We talk about oh, what. You're fired. <laughs> We're all fired. That was great. It's time <laughs> for uh, the all the feels. Uh, panda. Uh, when she gets the the book from her aunt that. I think she's close to, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. That she didn't go to the funeral. That she didn't go to, to the funeral, but she's Aunt like, hey, Doreen, thanks. R.I.P. Aunt Doreen. Uh, the, when she gets in, she sees that she, her, her aunt was still very invested in her yes, life. I yes. think that's a really good scene. Yeah. I think that was really well done. Uh, and that gave me the feels in this movie. Scene is chock full of weight what's, but also gave me chills at the same time. Yeah. True story. Um, My feels was when um that guy came out uh, shirtless. <laughs> it was great, though. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, the feels, I, the feels, uh, you don't have any, I don't really have any feels in this movie. Oh my goodness. Brian doesn't have a feel. Wow. He's trying to dodge I've around got, it. I've got a feel. Yeah. I, I, Unreal. I and you really, said it was fine. It was halfway you, decent. No feel. Yeah, Dude, doesn't. you've never not, he's always had a feel. Is this the first no feel? I think it might be the first no feel. The yeah. CCB, the, the, the Wizard of Oz CCB. Oh yeah, maybe the, Oh, that was just angry feels. I've, yeah. ha I've had angry, angry feels, feels before. This, this was is, just, this is just a fine, it was a fine feel. The whole movie, movie. So this movie's so dead to you. So benign. This movie's a goiter. I, it's just, <laughs> I would have, I, I would have loved to take a nap to this movie. Yeah. I would have loved to put Bring it on on a Sunday on. afternoon the DVD yeah. box. and take a nice snoozer to it and wake up and, <laughs> and be like, catch the final minute. Yeah. 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 When her and uh, Great Value Ben Affleck are on the on the boat and on a picnic blanket for some reason, I didn't figure that out. Uh, <laughs> still haven't. Um, Gotta take your shoes and off. And she starts to talk about like I know I, that I love cooking, but like I've lost the joy and I don't know how to find the joy. And she tears up. Like it's such a believable scene. Mm -hmm. She, Cindy, if you're listening, for all the talk, the turd talk, she, you crushed that scene. Like. Yeah. You, you think it's because she was told she's going to Australia and they <laughs> took her there? Yeah, well, I, she, she was just well sad. Be. So it's just like a boat <laughs> and a was, restaurant. It's That's just, it. Do we get to see the Sonic thing? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um, she she crushes that scene. I felt that it, it was really really well done. Uh, and then and then seeing the ants got all the clippings and stuff. I think both of those scenes work really well. And again, guys, I I don't I mean, I don't I don't know what you want. Cindy Busby has kept Hallmark afloat. For the last year, yeah, yes, it's she amazing. Is she has carried network. Yeah. the network. All of the shoulders. work, all of the work that she did in 2019, where she just, I, I seemed like she. We've was, seen so many Cindy Busby movies. We've seen a, a hot air balloon one. We've seen a weather one. We've seen a waterfalls one. We've seen an Australia one. I think we've seen a. Fifth I think one. we've seen a fifth one. Yeah, there's been five in a year. Don't give up on your there, dreams. I feel like there might balloon. be. Oh, oh, was. Hmm. Oh, I remember the cafe, the the uh, where she's running the bar and the barbecue guy comes in. It was uh, meet oh, me follow at, me to follow, Daisy Hills. Yeah, follow me to Daisy Hills. Is that Busby? I think it is Busby. That's Busby. Five Busbys in one year. Man, that's I feel crazy. Like that I, there's one other one. No, I don't know. No, surely not. Half dozen, dude. You're saying half dozen? There's only 52 weeks in a year. <laughs> It's it's Busby Land. Follow me to Daisy Hills is Sydney Busby. Wow, Man. Marshall Williams, yeah. that guy. That was a wild yeah. part of 2020 where every weekend we were getting a new Busby, a new yeah. Busby joint. That's right. It's amazing. Hey, let's take one more quick break. We'll be back and we'll talk about the way what's here on Deck the Hallmark. Yes, she was yes. in Godwink Christmas Meant for Love. Yes. So which in was, year, basically in 15 months, 16 months, we've gotten six Cindy Busby unreal. movies. Man, wow. That's crazy town. What are you guys doing? Nothing, man. Nothing. Not Over here talking about blooming onion sauce. Ugh, it's crazy. Well, they're to dream. They're uh, it's dream. time for the way what is the part of the show we talk about what in this uh, movie made us go away what panda. The seagull needs to go out of business. We need to be abundantly clear because oh boy. Uh, Coming on hot. they are they are. Why not, are you against small businesses? I love small businesses. Big fan. Doesn't I sound do, like I'm it. Not a fan of incompetence. Uh, You're a big cafe fan, though. Love cafe. Huge cafe fan. Huge cafe fan. They're they, busy they had, all the time. Sure. Which why then? Are you catching fish with a with a fishing rod and pole for your fresh catch of the day to feed? What, like 50 people coming in? You won't do it. Can't you can't catch it. Can't call many. it the fresh catch. The, the, what's crazy, that is the biggest weight what of this movie. Well, First of all, 
they show up at 4 a.m. and they don't get to the docks until the sun is up, not sunrise, sun is up. Uh, yes. So it's a two hour walk to the dock. Then they start, they catch a hat, which I don't know how it's pulling that hard on the rod and reel. And then we assume they caught enough fish to bring back for the fresh catch. How? When they never mention, they mention fish and chips, they never mention a fresh catch. And then they just go, see, fresh is better. People, fresh seafood restaurants aren't working at that capacity. No. They're catching fish, serving them the next day. Like, you get you get stuff caught that day for you, that is, that is home cooking. I don't understand that at all. That doesn't mean the cafe should shut down. That just means they shouldn't do that for the fish. Well, I'm just, but they do that like with almost everything though, like including like the clams and everything. Like, how are you, like, I'm not saying they should shut down. I'm saying they are say incompetent. That, I, I did okay, say that. Did They're say just that. largely incompetent when yeah. running. Like, yeah. that's not an efficient way of yeah. doing things. Like, it's just not efficient. I don't know how. And mm. when they're testing the food, like, they use it's one of those fish. It's efficient, though. Huh? It's efficient, though. If It's like oh, efficient, like efficient, but you said fishing. But you said yeah, that was fish stuff, man. But it's fish. Wow, that's that's great, Brand. Turns down under. Turns down under. 2.0. <laughs> Love it. Um, the kindergarten teacher is bringing the kids by, but she's also bringing the first grade class by as well for food. I was confused about the whole. What, what that is was happening? Weird. I was just. I was didn't that understand a last it. second decision? I didn't understand it. I don't understand. Like, what's happening there? I, I understand that it's some sort of trip. five year olds don't need a lot of structure. Like, you can decide last minute to just do something like that. Take sure, a bunch of other places. Sure, but why are the kindergarten and first graders Maybe going it's to a, the rest? It's one of those cla hybrid classes, like they have in the small schools. I guess I don't know. I I, I I didn't get it at all. Didn't make any sense. My final wait. What's Jimmy the electrician? Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, they make this statement. So Jimmy. Jimmy's just had a newborn. Uh, and he's over there trying to switch out the breaker box. And he gets electrocuted. Yep. Gets shocked. Standard. And they say, well, it's because he has a newborn. And I'm confused as to what they think. Is it because he's tired and he's getting shocked? Which in which case, like, maybe you need to take some time off, Jimmy, uh, or you're going to die. <laughs> or... Uh, are they thinking that as soon as you have a child, you're no longer a, a good electrician? They're, like he's or, been, st he's stayed up all night. He didn't get any sleep. That's what is I, that what you that think that was? was? That, that is that was, was the Im implication that Front newborn leave. crying all all night. He didn't get any sleep, and he's out there about to change out just, a breaker. Yeah, and he's just shocking good. himself. I'm worried about Jimmy. Yeah, I would be too, Jimmy. Yeah. Just 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 worried about that man. Uh, also, Nathaniel is my wait. What in general? Nathaniel's terrifying. I got, yeah, I got a lot on Nathaniel, but I've got it in the what the hallmark. But we can talk about it now. I don't care. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, he's he's kind of a stalker, right? Like she, her response to him should be "Get away from me." Yeah, I, there's uh, so many questions I about. Believe Nathaniel. he came back. Yeah, yeah, and he flew there in a private jet that he had. He had the jet. He says he had the jet like four times. Look, I wouldn't have, but I had the jet. I had. You did what now? You had a private jet just laying around, so you went from Bali to Australia. That well, I already got on. I already got. It's like when you get the. It's like when you have the limo. Rich people. It's like, it's don't like even when we. They're problem. giving us a ride of the airport, and we just stop and grab a quick diet coke on the way. Yeah, but, it's like one of the, I mean, we got the thousands car. Thousands of miles. Yeah, but thousands of miles, and also worse. Yeah, I, I just don't understand. Like, what does he do for a living? Does he just sell drugs? Like, what does he do that he's just got that kind of money and free time? I had the jet. I was in Bali for business. You know how you do. I'd come over the Seagull Cafe. Who wouldn't do it? So it's a de de I, I, declaration of love. You get I it. I don't understand it. Who wouldn't do it? Who wouldn't do it? He he's a weird. He is stalker. Yeah, he's next a, level yeah. creep. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a ton. I did have how you know what was the deal with the hat? Why was that so hard to reel in? Uh, that, I don't understand that. Th that that is the heaviest is, hat is, is a of all full time. Arc was that hat there made of gold? <laughs> it was water laden. Oh yeah. yeah, you know how water can weigh it down. Uh, it can, but water laden. Uh, <laughs> Say it one more time. Please. Water laden. It's waterlogged for those at home who are wondering why you keep saying that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they have, you know, they go and they get the shells, you know, um, and they're getting the stuff. You guys remember that scene? And uh, at the yeah. end, he gives her the, the shell. It's like got paint on it now. Yeah, and yeah it's nice. On a necklace. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was sweet, but that was a massive necklace. I like, know. It was Mass. You said you don't know. I know. That's a terrible necklace. And that necklace looks gigantic and not there, like in an 
oversized fashion way in just an ugly way. There had to be other ways to gift it, right? Besides necklace? Had to be. I don't know. I'm not... I think chunky... I think some people like chunky jewelry. Yeah, no, no, no. But that's the thing is it didn't look big enough to be that. It was to just be that like... thing that's supposed to draw your attention. It didn't look big enough. It didn't look small. It just looked weird. I didn't like it. It was, it was a statement piece. My biggest sure. weight one in this whole movie is the... Uh, quote unquote food fight that happens in the pantry. I, I, I am of the opinion with food fights, either go big or don't go at all. The, yes. I can, I, there's not, I know that they're in the pantry, but there's not many worse foods to food fight with than rice and cornflakes. Oh, finally, those up for years. finally, they did the, the, the flour, but it took so long to get there. Like they were, you know, 25, 30 seconds into this food fight and you, you look at them and you have no idea because they're just clean as can be. We got to get some liquid out there, boys and girls. So get some honey, get some, uh, uh, get some chocolate syrup, get some, get some fun stuff to throw. Like finally we get the flour. My either do it or don't do it. Like if you're going to food it's fight, a weird angry thing too. If it's you, an angry it is, food fight. but if you're going to food fight, like cornflakes are not what you food fight with. Jello, get on that. Soup, sure. Milk, let's go. You think they had soup in the pantry? It's not your house. It's a it's a pantry. Yeah, I understand. I'm just saying okay. when you're creating I'm not upset. They did what they had in yeah. the pantry. How about yeah. legumes? My thing, sure. My thing is when you legumes aren't any better than cornflakes. When you're coming nuts, up, I didn't right? know I don't know what they are. What are they? Dried nuts. beans. Oh, then that's a no go. Peanuts. Wet beans? Peanuts or legumes. Baked uh baked beans? Yeah, you could do some baking. Refried beans? Refried, absolutely. Oh, you do yeah, a refried that's an beans. excellent. That's next level. It's an excellent. Yeah. My, next my, level. my problem is not with the performance. When they used what they had in the pantry. My problem is when you are coming up with a movie and you want to do a food fight scene, don't do it in the pantry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like have a fun food fight scene that people will remember. No one's going to remember cornflake food fight. Cornflake food fight was a bad one. It was not a good one. That's all that it was my biggest way. What is yeah. you? You had this whole plan for a big angry food fight, and you used the most boring they food items. They didn't know how to resolve the big misunderstanding in this movie, and they chose uh, cornflake food fight, cornflake which was food not fight. a good idea. Yeah, no, that's all. Uh, early in this movie, uh, Cindy Busby is cre- uh, in chef in the kitchen, and she looks over at one of the sous chefs who's made something out of Jello, and she said, "Uh, we're we're going for." intriguingly gelatinous. This looks like hospital food. <laughs> We're going for intriguingly gen- gelatinous? Psalm live. Interestingly, people have said the same thing about me. <laughs> so <good>. Intriguingly <laughs> gelatinous. What is it about Panda? He's so intriguingly <laughs> gelatinous. Wait, would you call him a pear shape? I'm not really no. sure. Upside down candy apple. Skinny uh, on the bottom, I mean, fat on top. Like you've, that's- uh, <laughs> you've thought this through more than anyone else has. And if hey, you're, if can you up, update your, up, uh, no, 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 no. If you're fat up here and skinny down here, you are a right side up candy apple. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Upside no. down candy no, apple. No, because I'm thinking when you have like the, when it's when laying you're down. eating it. Oh yeah, no, no, then you're a right you're side You're thinking up. of a candy apple that's sitting in the store still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, but that's accurate. I don't know what this guy's talking so about. So you're a, you're a held I'm, I'm a held candy apple. You're a held candy, candy. I'm a held candy. I want you to uh, yeah. update all of your social media, your bio, intriguingly gelatinous slash held, held candy, candy apple. Held candy apple. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, done. Thank you. Wow. Um, her The restaurant name she comes up with is Laboratoire, <laughs> which is like French for laborator, laboratory, I, th- laboratory, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. And may I submit, it's the worst name for a restaurant. Yeah. If you if there's a restaurant called the Laboratory, I just don't think I'm going there. Like I think it's a bad name for a restaurant. I I, I just any other name would have worked for me. Like it. I like yeah. it. You're like ooh Laboratory. Well, because you don't Are know what they're going to be some cooking spicy up. Spicy nugs in there. <laughs> <laughs> but they they yep. would though, and they'd be the craziest thing you've ever eaten because the it's laboratory. A laboratory. It, it, yeah, it, the laboratory. The laboratory implies to somebody with the palate of a six year old. No, oh. no, no, yeah. no. The yeah. laboratory implies that they're working they're on working some on stuff. Them. So maybe the so cutting maybe, edge. Maybe the food lab. Food Lab's a great name. Yeah, if you're five. <laughs> you nailed it. Dude, you dude, nailed you it. Ever, you right? really got right. it. <laughs> um, she brought her chef's coat all the way to Australia with her. <laughs> Not knowing she was yeah, going to. No, no, no. Yeah, she's there chefing. to sign a few papers. 
So <laughs> she brought her. You right. never know when you're gonna need it, man. <laughs> she brought her chef's coat. I did catch that. That's all riot. the way across the world. <laughs> she went across the world, had to pack a bag, and went just in case I get hired. <laughs> I forgot she did that. How in the <laughs> world? Um, I do want to point out that uh, Tim Ross's name in the movie is Simon Cook. Everybody calls him Cook, including his mom. His mom calls him by his last name, which I found really weird. Yeah, that's weird. I just It's just weird to me. That doesn't make any sense. They sneak into his mom's kitchen to get ice cream, and he's whispering, and he says, shh. Uh, she doesn't like it when I, and then he's talking the whole time. He stops talking and goes, <laughs> it's like, so you can talk the whole time, but if you say the word eat, <laughs> she's going to wake up. He's like, Shh, she doesn't like it when I, like, what, what are you doing? Just finish the sentence. It's easier for all of us. Um, they have to change the electricity's down. So they move everything to outside and he basically sends uh, Busby out with a, an extension cord to go across the street to the cottage. I'm here to, we have what we call the big hundo or the big hundy here. It's a hundred foot extension cord. It's bigger than the one in the movie <laughs> and it does not stretch across my backyard, which is tiny. That extension cord is not reaching from the restaurant not. to an outlet at that cottage. It's not going to be close. I, I just don't understand. And then lastly, Aunt Doreen loves her great niece and she kept all these newspaper clippings of every time her great niece did something in New York. And my question is, how did she get the newspaper clippings? How did she get hard copy newspapers from the United States of America in Australia? Could be the Times. You saw the New York Times over there? Did you see the New York Times is front page in a chef? With a new restaurant? New York Times does stuff like that. But she's yeah. got a folder full of them. Yeah. And I just don't know how she got it. I don't know how she got I mean, it was her, her sister who didn't bother to show up for the funeral mailing her these hard... Like, this is all in the age of the internet. Like, she could have easily printed out stuff. No, they're all original newspaper clippings, and I don't get it unless Australia's really down with the New York culinary scene. It doesn't make any sense. They might be. They might Those be. are my white what? Hey, guys, I don't know if you're going to believe this or not, but Cindy uh, just got done filming a movie called In Action. Guess who is in that movie with it, her? Is it Tim Ross or Christopher Russell? It's Christopher Russell. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Did he see Man, it coming? Are they getting married? I don't. Let's start that rumor. She just got married. They're she dating. Just got married, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Cindy. <laughs> I was just kidding. It's a rumor. This is why you don't spread rumors. That's why you don't start rumors, Jeez, everybody. Oh, <laughs> For what the whole market's the part of the show. What <laughs> what could have been if you haven't got some clarity questions that we still have? I'm still trying to recover from Dan over here. <laughs> Do what I can. <laughs> Captain <laughs> TMZ. Stoking the fires. <laughs> Poor Cindy just got married. There's already rumors floating Jerk. around. All right. Started by Dan. Started by Dan. You hate to see it. Mm, it's a shame. I was going to call him Rusby. I don't uh, hate that. <laughs> I heard they're dating guys. I hate them. <laughs> look, Rusby. Rusby's a power couple. Rusby 2021. I, I have nothing to do with that. <clears throat> Why did the picture start moving at the end? Mm. I, I, it's just, it's a simple thing. lines want to know. I, guys, I was, I, I'm getting ready to turn off the movie. I'm like, ah, it's almost done. And then all of a sudden, it's moving. And I looked at my wife. I said, what's happening well, they right kissed. now? I got up to go to the bathroom. And then I was like... You said, what's happening? And I came back into the room. I was like, this is this is." Bonkers. I don't understand. It's not a flashback. I mean, I guess it is a flashback. It is a flashback. Why, but why, why it's is the picture... a moving flashback. Why? In the picture frame. Yeah, picture but frame. Doreen, and here's where it gets interesting to me. And this is the this is actually the, where my what the hallmark comes in. Doreen looks at the camera and winks at it. <laughs> and then they go back. Like, she winks at the camera. So... I knew the whole time. What... <laughs> I, is Doreen playing? Like, it makes you think that this is maybe a ghost story Doreen's where she's, lost. she's pulling the strings yeah. to make all this happen somehow. And maybe that's the reason why the breaker went down. And maybe that's the reason why the house needed or the whole place needed updated. Yeah. It's because Doreen's the one messing up things behind the scenes. A it's, ghost story. Yeah, I a like little it. ghost story. And, and so that's it. my theory. Mm. I, I, uh, my only one is about um, uh, my guy, Simon. I, and we might have gotten this, but what did Simon do before coming and working at the Seagull? He lived in Sydney, but what did he do? Because my he guy, he does, a, he, he a, does mention it. I think he because yeah. here's what I, here's what I do know about Simon. 
Simon has a cottage that he bought and mm-hmm. flipped. Yep. Classic. And he also has a boat. Yeah. And I, he works as a, at a chef at at the at the cafe. I think he he did cooking before. I think he was he was he, a he big, says it real quick and okay. I can't recall. So yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of want to hear more backstory. The story's I, interesting. I would have you know what I what this movie could have used is some flashback of Simon in Sydney because then we could have saw the uh, the Jimmy Neutron white hair thing. Jimmy Neutron white hair. Yeah, yeah no, I Classic. love that Sonic. You know, you know, the Sonic. I have two. Uh, first of all. The Nathaniel character, what does he do for a living where he can just, he has the private jet. I've got the jet, um, I mean. But also he says to her several times when he gets to Australia, I've been trying to call. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Did you did you pick up the phone and go, man, I don't know how to use this. <laughs> did Doesn't he try calling once and she did, hangs up on him? Did you call successfully and she just not? I didn't see that. I, thought I, I saw it. her like try to ignore was her she, mom. That was the mom. Yeah, she tried to ignore her mom. If yeah. he's been trying to call, then she knows it or he hasn't been trying to call. And she knows it. It doesn't seem yeah. like that makes sense. And then lastly, I want to know, I, I want to know where they filmed the inside of the restaurant because we're to believe. The restaurant or the, the, the cafe? Rest, the cafe. So her, oh, yeah, the cafe. The cafe, I'm sorry. We're to believe that those two people are locked in what looks like a plywood sliding door. Yeah. It's a sliding door lock situation, which we've all been to a beach house. They have those. But like on a on a wood sliding door, that seems like a stretch and not like something that would happen in like a real restaurant. And I want to know where they filmed the actual they clearly didn't film it in an actual restaurant. I want to know where they filmed it because hmm. that didn't make any sense. Okay. Um I am getting word on the Facebook Uh-oh, chat. Here we go. That uh, that is not his mom. Oh, in the movie that, that calls him cook. I thought it was his mom. Marla calls him uh, cook. Yeah, I thought that was his mom. No, Marla is okay. not his mom. Stand corrected. I thought I thought there might have been a scene where I missed. Real, Does he call home or something? Real time. No, no, no. He, he real time correction here. That is. I not love real mom. time corrections. Thanks, yeah. Stat Boy. Stat Boy. Uh, we did, everybody. Congratulations. Hey. Uh, we are going to uh, leave you with a uh, another fantastic edition of the Double Decker of the Week. It's where Panda does the deep dive into one of the people who have signed up for Bramble Jam Plus. Uh, you tell their story in such mm-hmm. beautiful ways. There's never been a dud. And uh, I'm very excited to hear who we have today. Who do we have, Dano? Um, we have Michael Hutchinson, a.k.a. Boston, Boston Mike. Mike. Yeah, Boston Mike. Fantastic. Uh, Boston Mike, he's diversifying his portfolio. Uh, that's what he told me when we were chatting on the phone. Uh, and uh, he's opening up a, a new business. And I think you're going to be on board with it, Brand. I love it. Uh, it's called Global Globs. Global glo- Before I get to the Global Globs real quick, what does Boston Mike currently do? It's uh, TV stuff. Okay, great. Yeah. I, you see, yeah. I, so, so he does TV stuff. He's yeah. diversifying his portfolio. Yeah, diversifying. And he's opening up. Global Globs. Global Globs. Okay, global what globs. is Global Globs? Well, first of all, it's international brand. And I think that you, we need to establish that okay. up front. Uh, but if, if there's a glob of something, he's going to sell it. What do you mean a gl- like a glob? When you say international, can we back up? Yeah. Does that mean he has stores across the world, or does that mean he sells to anyone across the yeah, world? Yeah, sells and ships, but also buys globs yeah, from all over. But he doesn't have stores that he just is still Not in yet. Boston. He's, he's just stuck right okay. now. All right. And if it's a stuck glob of something, it, he, he'll buy it and sell it. Can you give me some examples of some of the blobs that he has? Glob, globs. Glob, sorry. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's you, on me. No, no, no. That's no, on me. No. Ever. No, Think a glob please. is a blob again. So I wanna, uh, there's global global blobs, You're, and that is that's a, a compa- different compa- industry altogether. Big world blobs. You are just just besmirching the name, guys. Of I, Boston I, Mike. I, and of globs. Okay, I 100 percent caught sorry, it myself. Apology not good enough. Work on it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is pretty disgraceful. Okay. All right, I will. I will get right on that. So, can you give us some examples of some of the blobs that they have sold? Globs, got it. Unbelievable. Some of the some of the globs that so they've sold. So uh, disrespectful. Okay, give you just a few. Uh, uh, glob of uh, pudding from uh, uh, just down this road. Walmart. How's a glob of pudding? Who's different buying than a <laughs> random glob of pudding? If the pudding's good enough, I don't see an issue. What do you mean? If the pudding's, you do they eat it? Is it's just it a glob left of over? It. I, Mike doesn't ask questions. He just sells it. But who's buying it if he doesn't ask and questions? Well, I mean, I, I'm not. I if, if I the bought seller, Boston I bought it. Boston. You bought it. Okay. How much yeah. did you buy the, the glob? Well, it's not a lot. It's microtransactions. It was like 10 bucks. But 
if he does, if the seller it hadn't has not asked any questions, that means if the buyer asks questions, the seller doesn't know the answer. Boston Mike doesn't know how to answer those. Boston questions. Mike, this is one thing that I do know, and it's right on the website. It says Boston Mike certified. Okay. And so, if, and that's good enough for me. So it covers everything. I asked him. I said, "Where does it come from?" He goes, "It's Boston Mike certified." I said, "Good enough." I just, uh, man. So, but d- does Boston Mike? buy and then resell or does he work okay so how much like for your jello your glob of jello i think he probably paid i'm guessing and again i don't know figures don't i trust him with it of course if he spent maybe three bucks on the glob i pay those are good margins it's good good margins. those are great margins for him and that's why i'm all in i'm investing what is the most expensive glob sold to date on uh, global globs dot uh dot dot me dot me dot me yeah um Uh, currently it's uh, a, a glob of cookie dough. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm in and, for that. And it, it's, How it's, much? Is that Boston Mike certified? Oh, 100%. Okay, yeah, yeah. Is not there anything on his website that's not Boston Mike certified? Uh, th- th- a there's couple a clearance things. section. There's I'm a sure. clearance section <laughs> and stuff that we, yeah. I, a little, uh, there's some shampoo there. He does not certify that. There's I'm a sorry, lot. Of, what does certified mean? Uh, it, Boston Mike g- so gives it a thumbs up. So he certifies a pudding. And a cookie dough, but not, not shampoo. Why yeah. is he not giving the thumbs up to the shampoo? That's what is, bothersome. Okay, so he, he tried it, and this is what he told me. He said, I didn't like the way it smelled. He said it also caused a burning wait, sensation. Wait, wait, wait. So he took part of the glob? He, he tried he to test it. He's using his own product? Does he test all I'm the glob? Did he me. test the jello? Know. Did he test the cookie dough? I, I think he might have. Mm. But that's why I trust him because if mm. he's he's putting himself on the line every day, every day he's on the front line he's on the front of, lines of glob of, yeah. of globs. And, and that now. Makes we have me a lot of fun. We, we had a lot of fun here on Tech the Hallmark, but there's nothing funny about frontline workers. No. Um, they are saving us so we can get back to normal. And no matter what Panda says, that's right. Joking about frontline globs, like it wasn't really in good taste. But we know <laughs> that the frontline workers are keeping us safe. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. And to you and you only, we say, Merry Christmas! Deck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live, and yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray, set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com. For more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free, you can go to BrambleJamPlus.com.